Nobody is talking about this one spot in the neck that could be creating your wing scapula. And today, you're not only gonna learn what that one spot is, you're also gonna learn the three steps you need to take so you can fix your little chicken wing. Adam here from trainermassage.com. And that one little spot in the neck is a muscle called the scalenes. But to understand how this little muscle can create not only your wing scapula, but also things like thoracic outlet syndrome, I'm gonna be explaining it by using a simple straw. So what I have in front of me is two cups of water, with this one being the brain and this one being the most common muscle you're most likely training already, which is gonna be the serratus anterior. Now, when we want our muscles to be moving, we're gonna be telling our brain to send an impulse to our serratus anterior. But what ends up happening to a lot of us who have a weak serratus anterior is that this nervous system gets cut off and pinched by something like the scalenes and the fascia around it. It's not just the scalenes that can cut off that nervous supply, there's another muscle in the body that you might also be working on right now. I'll get to that muscle in a little bit, but before I do, let me know in the comment section which one you think it is. Now you can try to stretch this muscle out, but because of the fascia that wraps around the muscle, you may not get very good results, which is why I recommend starting off with cell massage because it's gonna help loosen up that fascia and even help relax that muscle. To cell massage this muscle, start off by dropping your ear down towards your shoulder. Now from here, apply some pressure to the top of the muscle, making sure to keep your pressure aimed down towards the chest. Once you have that pressure, slowly tilt your head to the opposite side as you hold your pressure down. This is called a pin and stretch and you can repeat it for roughly one to two minutes. Make sure you're not applying pressure directly into the neck and only use enough pressure to the point where it's uncomfortable but not painful. Besides the serratus anterior being weak, there are other muscles within the body that can also contribute to your wing scapula, with the first one being your levator scapula. To release this muscle, lay on your back with a small ball underneath your traps. And to get into these deeper muscles, all you have to do is passively flex your head backwards which is going to shorten up the upper trap fibers and allow easier access to the levator scap. If you're trying to contract your muscle to pull back, however, this is not going to work. And once you're in that position, go ahead and find the most tender spot within that area and apply either micro movements or static pressure for one to two minutes. Now, another muscle that can get tight is the rhomboids. To hit this muscle, all you have to do is drop that little ball into the area between your scapula and your spine. Now, from here, we're gonna perform what's called a pin and stretch by passively contracting the muscle by bringing that arm towards the back. Now, find the most tender spot within the muscle, apply some pressure, and then slowly stretch it out by bringing the arm across the body. Release the tension, reset, and then repeat for another one to two minutes. Now, do you remember earlier how I said there's another muscle that could be choking the nerve supply to the serratus anterior? Well, that one muscle is the pec minor. And not only have I found this muscle to be personally responsible for a lot of pain in my client's shoulders and arms, but studies have also shown that by releasing this one muscle with one session of massage, you can see improvements in your round of shoulders up to two weeks. Now to work on this little baby pack, make sure to roll over to your belly and then place that ball under the top of your chest next to the shoulder pocket. Now from here, find the most tender spot within the muscle and hang out there performing either static pressure or micro movement. You can also perform a pinna stretch here as well by passively flexing the chest inwards, pinning down the most tender spots and then pulling that arm and shoulder away and up. Pick whichever technique you want to do and perform them for another one to two minutes. Now we just completed step number one, which was to loosen all the fascia and the muscles that were shortened and tight, which brings us into step number two, which is to restore the length of these tissues now. And to speed this up real quick, I'm going to be showing you all four stretches on screen while going over a point or two for each one. And when you stretch out your scalenes, make sure you're first of all dropping that other arm down so we can increase that stretch. But we can also simply rotate our head down so we can target the posterior scalenes, or we can rotate it up so we can target the anterior scalenes. Now, when we're stretching out our levator scapula, we can also drop this opposite arm down to increase that stretch. On top of that, we can also use the other arm to gently pull down, which will help elongate it even more. And one of the best ways to stretch the rhomboids I found is to basically get that scapula and pull it away from the spine. And the best way I found to do that is to basically cross the arms and hold on to something as you lean back. Now, if you have a better option for stretching out your rhomboids, then let me know in the comments. 
Now, whenever you stretch out your pec minor, we can either leave the arm down to the side or we can bring it up and block the elbow against the wall in order to put that pec minor onto a stretch. Regardless of whichever one you want to do, when you get into that position, all you have to do is lean forward a little bit and then pivot on that shoulder to get a good stretch. With every single exercise, make sure to hold each stretch for roughly 30 seconds up to a minute so you can help elongate those tissues. Now, once you're done releasing and stretching all those tissues, there's no reason for that psoriasis interior to not want to fire up anymore. So let's take advantage of that with some basic exercises. Now, the first exercise is called a push-up plus, but with a band pulling your arms inward, which is going to force you to create an outward pressure. Studies have shown that this will engage the psoriasis interior way more than a regular push-up plus. To get started, get into the push-up position with that band wrapped around your arms. Make sure your core and glutes are tight as well. Now, protract your shoulder blades forward without rounding your spine to avoid compensation. Hold this position for one or two seconds before you slowly return and repeat once again. Now, something extra here, if we put ourselves into this push-up position with our shoulders protracted, but then we slowly push ourselves down by pushing my fingers forward, then we're gonna be able to engage that serratus anterior even more. Thank you to Athlean X for this little tip and the next one coming up. This next exercise is called the band pull apart with an emphasis on the serratus anterior. So what you wanna do here is get your shoulder blades protracted without rounding your back. Now pull the band apart as far as you can and then slowly let it return all while keeping that pushing pressure outward so we can keep that serratus anterior engaged. Train each muscle for roughly two to three sets to 12 to 20 reps. So now that you're done working on the scapula, we can now work on your forward head posture, which you can do by clicking on the video up here. 